Well, I think in terms of short fiction, um, it actually was with Dolores. So I submitted a story to um, the Student Literary Journal, and um, it was really exciting. I mean, it was a story called The Neon Women or something like that, or Neon Woman, or um, but it was uh, yeah, short fiction, and um, it was it was just thrilling to kind of see the whole package ultimately, you know, to see the cover and to see it, uh, the interior design that went into the, uh, into the layout of the story. And, um, and so I, I think that was the earliest example. And then I also submitted a short story to another uh, um, undergraduate literary journal that was um, at another college where they accepted submissions from all across the country. And that was a, a, a journal called Genesis, I think. And um, in my acceptance letter got lost in the mail, I guess. So I didn't even know that I was in it, but I eventually got the copies in the mail. So that was also that was another kind of thrilling aspect to just think that your story has been lost in the ether and then to get this nice bound edition in the mail. Had you been writing for a long time in creative writing courses, or was it kind of a, a wild hair? Oh no, I'd, I'd taken the, all the creative writing courses that I could hear at UNL, and I studied with Jerry Shapiro and Judy Slater and Marley Swick, and um, it's, uh, I started, I mean, I was always kind of writing through college, but I didn't, I wasn't an English major to begin with, I was a journalism major, and so I kind of, it took a while to find my way to the to the English major and to the creative writing courses. I didn't really even know that they were available, I guess. I didn't know that that was an option for students. And so it was thrilling to discover that there, there were all these classes that I could take. And I took every one I could, plus I think you could take some of them again. So. The more you do it and the more you read, the better sense you get of what editors are looking for. And so I think ultimately you don't want that to affect your decision about your subject matter too much, but or the way that you approach what you write. But it does end up um, influencing the direction you take in terms of am I going to write this story that might be um, that, that I'm not sure is going to work. I mean, I guess it kind of um, you, you don't want to think of it as as interfering with your sense of risk, you know, you still want to, to to do work that's creatively challenging. But I think you, or at least I feel compelled to try to manage that within um, realistic expectations of where where it can end up and and how it will reach and find its readership. As far as managing risk versus taking cues from what what has been published before you and being inspired by that. Do you think that if you've never been published before, you should sort of hone your craft on more established writers, or do you think that there's always an opportunity for risk in writing? Well, there's always an opportunity for risk, and we see it happening. I mean, there's, um, there's so many different kinds of, of works being published every week, not just from the, in terms of books, but not like the large publishing houses and the smaller independent publishing houses, but in the literary journals every month or, or every quarter or whatnot, there's, uh, there's just example after example of writers actually sort of pushing at the boundaries, experimenting with different things, and, and, that there's, a, and there's a readership for it. I mean, there's people that appreciate it. And so, it, I mean, it can be challenging in terms of if, if, if what you're hearing from editors is that this work is too inaccessible and, 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 and people don't really know what to do with it and don't really understand it. Um, I mean, I think you don't want to ignore that advice or ignore that response. I think you want to take that into consideration as you move forward if publication is one of your goals. But, uh, but I think there's room for all kinds of writers and all kinds of writing. I think, as lo I, think, I mean, if you end, it, it's, it's essentially a business when it comes down to it, if you enter into the publishing aspect of it. I mean, if, I always tell my students that if you can just write something and be satisfied with it and put it in a drawer, you're the luckiest writer in the world. But, um, but if, you, if you're really kind of seeking a readership and you're, you're seeking a career as a writer and, um, 
and success, then you actually do have to kind of um, see some aspects of it as a business and, and uh, approach it professionally. And one of those ways is to um, find out who the editors are, who the agents are, what kind of work they're publishing, what kind of work they're interested in, looking perhaps at um, not necessarily trends, but at least look at and, and seeing what the books are that are being published, having some awareness of, of contemporary publishing and, and who the writers are that uh, people are reading and that the magazines are talking about and the newspapers are reviewing. I mean, that that ultimately serves your overall sense of, of, of the publishing industry and, um, and how to approach it. How far do you think someone could go with that? <laughs> well, I think um, there are opportunities at, at writing conferences and there are opportunities at, uh, like right now, the Associated Writing Programs, the AWP conference is going on. And so you see a lot of students going to that as an opportunity to go to the book fair and to, uh, to look at the journals that are being published, perhaps meet some of the editors. And those kinds of connections can be really valuable. And because so many editors are seeing so much work across their desk that if they can recognize a name or, if, or recognize a title or something, or if they've got some kind of heads up, it, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's, they're going to be immediately interested in the work, but it might get you a more careful read than if, uh, if it was just another piece on the slush. And so, um, yeah, I mean, you, you don't want to be obnoxious <laughs> about it, and uh, but it doesn't hurt to to develop some kind of uh, um, to invest in learning about those people who are making the decisions about what gets published. And I mean, and I think um, it, if there are writers that you admire, um, writers don't get a lot of fan letters. And so they'll remember you if, if you do send them one, especially if it's a thoughtful letter that indicates what you liked about their work. And, um, and those connections to other writers can be valuable as well, too, even if you just drop them a note on Facebook. Have you gotten a fan letter from someone that you remember especially? Um, I mean, I, I, I get some that, um, yeah, certainly that, that I'll, people that email me or, or it is particularly sweet when you get an actual handwritten <laughs> letter in the mail, which sometimes you get, and um, or somebody will drop a note on Facebook, and, and yeah, yeah, you, you, you remember, I don't have too many people approaching me as writers outside of the classroom, you know, I think um, uh, usually the people I hear from are, are readers who maybe have no intentions of writing at all, but, um, but yeah, yeah, they're certainly memorable. Um, I probably don't pay too close attention to like little notes just scrawled across a form rejection slip, but if an editor actually has clearly carefully read the piece and had a, has had a lot of great interest in it, but has some comments that make sense, then I'll, you know, I'll sit down and incorporate those. Um, now as for the novels that I've written, um, my agent is usually the first person to read them, and she's usually the first person with, with comments, and, um, and so I'll make revisions according to, to her suggestions. And then when an, and an editor takes it on, then, then, then you have a, a, a many more changes to make, and um, but it's all part of the, the process. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, because um, you could go years without <laughs> any acceptance, you know, or, or a story that that comes close one place, but then just gets form rejections other places. I mean, uh, you really do have to just kind of soldier on and recognize that most writers have gone through this. Some of your favorite writers have experienced this. Um, that there are some writers who've gotten far more rejections <laughs> than you've gotten. And, um, and in the meantime, just keep developing your work, keep reading, keep, keep writing, and um, don't let the whole publishing thing uh, interfere too much with 
the creative expression, which is really what's going to further you ultimately anyway, is once you've developed that voice and refined it and polished your work, that's when, um, that's when the editors will take notice. Absolutely, because you actually are tossed into the actual experience. I mean, the experience of working on the Loris is not really different that much from the experience of working on any literary journal. Um, and especially today, when uh, a student can start their own journal with, in a, a much easier way than, it, than they could when I was a student. I mean, there's, um, it, it, you know, there, there are options of doing a journal online or doing printing it more cheaply than we did back then, and so it's um, it, it it really kind of helps you not just learn a, your way around the business of publishing and the particularities of editing, but helps you develop your aesthetic and helps you to learn what matters to you as a as an editor, as a as a writer, as a reader, and kind of. Um, learning more about what uh, what your tastes are but also what um, what you want your journal to communicate basically um, and what uh, what kind of work you want to to bring to readers well I, I think um, I mean as a teacher obviously we have classes and work with students, but the most that the students are going to learn is on their own when they're uh, when they're doing the work, when they're writing page after page after page, and when they're reading and reading page after page after page, reading everything that they get their hands on. And so I think there's so much that that a writer learns just from reading and just from writing that really can't be articulated in a classroom or in a textbook. And so it's it's vital that that you're reading good work, reading diverse work, um, and getting a sense not just of the classics but also what contemporary publishing looks like. And um, and yeah, and just uh, working past any writer's block and getting words down on paper. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.